you know, and... The, you and, know. and how can the mind grab that, you know? <laughs> exactly. And, you know, it, it is such a problem, even for the physicists themselves, even for scientists, and especially in biology. You know, uh, biologists often haven't um, really grasped this, you know, even though it, 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 you'd think they would because they talk to, you know, they, you'd think they'd be aware of what's happening in other areas of science. But no, it's, it's still not sort of translated across that, um, you know, there isn't this solid reality. You see, the other thing that I also found fascinating was, I think you call it the quantum vacuum. Yes. Is that right? Yes. It's like the more and more you look, the more space you find. Yes, yeah. And you were saying also they'd done various experiments where they freeze something to incredibly cold where no life can possibly exist. Mm and they still find these vacuums, yeah. I think you used the words, teeming with life. Yes, yeah. And so, how do you explain that? that right, right. Well, um, that's a question, by yeah, the way. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's, that's a question. How do you explain that? Yeah. So, um, that's part of another... The quantum vacuum is actually another um, uh, consequence of quantum physics. So, you know, we were saying that... Um, things exist as an idea yes. and as a possibility of something being there and it's only when you look at it that it actually um, comes to uh, it comes to actuality it comes to a point particle um, so you know it, and it's it's a wave of possibility that it exists as not not the wave that we're sort of used to thinking of like a wave in the sea or something like that it's a wave yeah. of possibility um, well when the actual wave um, is spread out, as a consequence of that, you can actually uh, think that a particle is anywhere along that wave of possibility. So uh, a particle could be here, there, could be you know on the Eiffel Tower, could be on the moon. You know that wave of possibility makes it theoretically possible for that particle to pop in and out of existence. And um, so people predicted this. People at um, Heisenberg predicted that this was. Um, uh, going to happen that you get this sort of sea of particles popping in and out of existence and that is indeed what we do find we um, now find that uh, even in a vacuum you get these particles popping in and out of existence they're still active um, even at zero point temperature when you cool things down to nothing else is moving you still get these particles popping in and out and uh, that is a very sort of interesting co concept and uh, um, you know, actually, um, you ask, you know, why is that? Well, you know, I've actually seen that it's it's really the black hole principle in action. So um, in my which book... Which is the fundamental theory which, of which your book. Which is the fundamental yeah, yeah. theory of the book. Yeah. You know, so um, to answer your question in a deep way, it's because that's where all energy and matter is actually coming from. So at the limitations of our perception, which are both at zero point temperature and at the speed of light, which we'll, I'll explain in a bit, uh, a bit more detail, um, you actually get uh, this activity happening because um, even at those limitations of our perception, that's not the limitations of our universe. Yeah, so, and to slide another dimension in, yes. when you talk about the hologram principle as well, yes, yeah. like every th everything is everywhere. Yes, yes. And so you've got a quantum vacuum, and in theory, in that vacuum, is everything. Is everything, yeah. Including all information. Yep, yeah. So it's a consequence of what we were talking about um, with, you know, nothing existing and everything being um, like, uh, you know, just a whiff of possibility. That all you really know about something is that it's information. And, uh, for example, an electron, it, we know that it has a negative charge, but uh, we don't know what's charging it. We don't know, there's no power station in there making that charge. You know, so all we know is it's got that information of charge. You know, how does it keep its charge throughout its life without anything powering it? How does it spin, you yeah. know, throughout its life without anything charging? That's all information, that's all we can say about it. You know, so at a deep level, and this is not something that, you know, is particular, particular to me or even these physicists that are the rebel band of physicists that I'm talking about. This is mainstream physics that at the deepest level everything is information. So in the quantum vacuum, um, you have this um, sea of light, of light particles, photons, that um, are actually uh, splitting into their component particles, which are um, particles of matter. 
um, such as the electron, and there are component particles like the particle of antimatter, which is called a positron, for example. You know, so um, you've got this sea of, of photons just splitting into two and then coming back together again to form a photon. And this is that quantum vacuum, this is that sea of possibilities that was predicted by quantum physics. So you've got these particles sort of coming in and out of existence. So uh, what we mean by that is when um, it goes from a photon, or a particle of light, to a particle of a ch with charge, matter, and um, you know density and all of that, and then coming together to a photon again. So it's um, then not got the charge and, and the uh, density and everything like that. So it's it's you're creating charge out of nowhere. You're creating matter and charge and particles out of nowhere, and um, this can sometimes be seen. You know, I said that particles are waves as well as particles as well, as an interconnecting sea of waves of light. And we know that where two waves interconnect, you can hold an enormous amount of information. So we're surrounded by a sea of light, which is a sea of information. And um, if you take the holographic principle that you were, you were saying, um, where a hologram actually has each part of a hologram, such as the sort of uh, Princess Leia um, a little picture in Star Wars, which most people are uh, familiar with, um, that's, a, it, that's an example of a hologram in popular culture. You know, each part of the hologram actually contains the information in the whole. So if you were to take a bit, bit of um, the film that makes a hologram, because um, you make holograms using lasers and they go through photographic film. So if you were to take some of the film that makes a hologram and shine a laser through that, you wouldn't get just a small part of the image, you'd get the whole image. Right. You know, so that's a, whole, uh, that's a holographic principle, that uh, the small actually contains the information, the whole. And it's the same with the universe. And, um, you know, the Scientific American magazine in 2003 actually had a uh, front cover with this. Are we living in a holographic universe? You know, it's yeah. The other thing, I was wondering, I'm just trying to bring in different things yes. here, which uh, are inter I feel are interrelated. You also talk about that we actually only are aware of 2% of reality. So 98% mm. of reality is actually hidden from our awareness yeah. at any level, whether yeah. it be seeing or hearing yeah. or feeling or whatever. It's hidden away. And it's hidden away, and you go into this quite a lot of detail, which I didn't fully grasp with the antimatter right. and everything, but it's basically what I would call different dimensions. Yes, yeah. And so... How does this fit in with the, holly, the, 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 the principle quantum, of the hologram, yeah, the different yeah. dimensions? Well, um, you know, it's really going back, t back again to that concept that I said at the beginning that, um, you know, the quantum physicists discovered that our consciousness um, was responsible for bringing in reality. So some quantum physicists said that actually consciousness is fundamental to reality. So you then, so this is a big shift that's really going on in physics at the moment. So once you understand that, then you understand that actually um, we may not be able to see the whole universe, and uh, some of could the, some of the universe be hidden from us because it's beyond our level of consciousness. See, so, see, so I can accept yeah. that fully. Yes. That, that for me yeah. is. That, that makes sense somehow. Yeah, yeah. And in my book and, and what I'm proposing is that um, one of those limitations, we've mentioned zero point temperature, which actually isn't in my book as a perception horizon, but um, the limitation of um, our normal consciousness is actually at the speed of light.